Alnet News Digest, 27th of June 3309. We read the news so you don't have to. Looking back on May's and June's news, by far the biggest story has been the progress made by Aegis to get pilots into the heart of the maelstroms and to return safely with tissue samples. There were other stories too. We became able to fight back in the Thargoid-occupied ground bases. There's a new hunter-class Thargoid. The federal election grinds interminably on. And an awful lot of Thargoid cult members have vanished. At the beginning of May, we knew little about the Thargoid maelstroms, other than that they appeared to be driving the Thargoid invasion of the bubble that started in December last year. Siojin A, now working with Aegis, explained that the Thargoids had invaded for a very specific purpose following the genocide attempted on them by Azimuth scientist Salvation in August 3308. She could not say what the purpose was, but they seemed to be trying to take over the bubble, starting at the eight maelstrom clouds and working outwards. Those fighting the invasion gradually worked out that the best tactic was to prevent the Thargoids from invading populated systems by making them feel unwelcome in every system that they started investigating. The number of systems controlled by Thargoids seems to have peaked, but nonetheless they continue to hold more than 1,000 systems, 160 of which were previously the home to a human population. The newly reformed Aegis believed that the key to understanding the invasion must be those eight maelstroms, and they spent the last few months developing the technology to get to the heart of the maelstroms and to conduct scientific field work. Caustic sink launchers, which prevent ships from melting in the caustic Thargoid gases, have been available since March, but it wasn't until May that Aegis developed the Thargoid pulse neutralizer that meant that ships could get to the eye of the maelstroms. Once again, Siojin A warned that the Thargoids could detect our imminent arrival and were preparing new lines of defence against us. Around the 10th of May, reports began to emerge of sightings of the much-anticipated Titan motherships inside the maelstroms. The maelstrom environment appears to be a passive defence surrounding the mothership or hive ship and the Titans appear to contain a portal to another dimension, allowing Thargoid vessels, such as Interceptors and the new Glaive Hunters, to teleport to the system. More prosaically, the apparent portals may simply be entries to the Thargoid docking bay. Professor Albert Ezro sent a message to all pilots, thanking them for their work and looking to the future. Now we have positively identified the capital ships directing the alien invasion fleets, Aegis can develop ways to disrupt them. It has always been my belief that Aegis is a science initiative first, and a military research program second. I admit to having a personal dream of true communication with the Thargoids, but the past few months suggest that the Thargoids are sadly uninterested in opening a dialogue with humanity. We owe the billions of civilians displaced from their homes a promise to secure their future. The next Aegis project was to develop a Pulse Wave Xeno Scanner, a hybrid between the Pulse Wave Scanner used when mining and the Xeno Scanner used to analyse Thargoid interceptors and scouts. This new device can scan the Titan motherships identifying areas that can be investigated using research limpets or that can have materials blasted off with a laser or an abrasion blaster. In mid-June, Azimuth Biochemicals, recently driven out of the One Drama system, realised it was missing out on all the work its rival Aegis had been doing. It put out an appeal at the same time as Aegis's appeal for research samples from the Titans. Pilots who, this time last year, were working with Azimuth returned in large numbers to help the Aegis initiative. Both Aegis and Azimuth collected a reasonable haul of Titan samples, and we await whatever developments may result.
first identified in the Eye of the Maelstroms, the Glaive Hunter-class Thargoid ship has become a significant hazard to shipping. The Glaives are playing their part in the hyperdiction and interdiction of ships passing through Thargoid space. Unlike the other Thargoid ships, the Glaives cannot be outrun, making them far more deadly. They also have technology to prevent hyperspace jumps, the alien Grom Bomb, and to force modules to reboot. The options available to those hyperdicted are to go very, very cold and hope the Thargoid doesn't notice, or to stand and fight. When confronted by a glaive, brave Sir Robin does not live to fight another day. The other new Thargoid device is the apparently automated Revenant drones that were found to be guarding abandoned settlements in Thargoid control systems. These skimmer-like devices shoot at anyone foolish or careless enough to come within their cone of seeing. They also throw sticky bombs, which is not terribly nice. For those who prefer not to fight the Revenants, it's normally relatively easy to sneak in and out of buildings while the Thargoids are looking the other way. Missions can be picked up in adjacent systems that are under invasion, and benefit both the system where you get the mission and the system you need to travel to. President Zachary Hudson is not standing for re-election. Imagine the outcry there will be if he manages to find some devious way to cling on to power. But his potential successors are not all that enticing either. There's multi-trillionaire Zachary Rackham, who allegedly made his fortune as a pirate before settling down to life as a businessman. Rackham believes in zero taxes for all and that every single citizen of the Federation can be just like him. His platform, therefore, is one of bankrupting the Federation. Slimy Toad Jerome Archer, the successor as Hudson's deputy to Brad Mitchell, who was killed by the Nine Martyrs bombings, is the architect of the Proactive Detection Bureau, the federal government's snoopers charter. He has been responsible for the loss of several dozen star systems that chose to leave the Federation rather than put up with being spied on. The PDB specialises in arresting criminals before they have committed any crimes, which puts them way above the law. The only likely winner, if we discount would-be write-in candidate LCU no fool like one, is Shadow President Felicia Winters. As leader of the Liberal Party, she believes that the Federation should help out its independent neighbours in driving out the Thargoids, that business should be regulated, but that the people should be trusted, and that a small tax rise will help pay for better services and security for the Federation's citizens. The election will be held in August. Meanwhile, in Imperial space, the only news is that the Emperor remains torn between her isolationist stance and the Empire working with Aegis to drive the Thargoids back. The Emperor accepted Princess Ashling's argument that this was one occasion where the Empire could not go it alone. Hadrian Duval, the arch-isolationist, has criticised the Emperor for this lapse in the Empire's total isolation. And the Emperor has in turn explained to Hadrian that she does not take criticism gladly, and that if he wishes to retain the use of his head, he would be wise to keep his seditious thoughts to himself. In June, the Order of the Far God came back into the headlines. The Order is outlawed in the Federation, and several tens of thousands of cult members have been clogging up the Federation's penal organs for some months. The Alliance kindly offered to take in the cult members, and it was while the more extreme True Chapters cultists were being prepared for transfer to the Alliance on board their confiscated megaship, the Dedicant, that the cult members decided to confiscate the megaship back and run away with it. Their whereabouts, and the whereabouts of the Federal Guards, who failed rather spectacularly in their guarding duties, are currently unknown. However, we have recently learned that the Fargoid megaships contain a warren of secret passages, so it may not have been all that hard for them to take their guards by surprise. 
where does this leave us all? We continue to fight back the Thargoids. We're waiting to see what Aegis and Azimuth come up with now that they have their Titan tissue samples. We're awaiting the outcome of the federal election in August, with all the excitement it deserves. We're waiting to see what the true chapters do next, and indeed whether they'll reveal themselves. And we're waiting to see whether Salvation really did survive his death, to become an evil, disembodied intelligence relying on Guardian technology for his existence. We are waiting. And that's May's and June's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. <laughs>